Welcome to this next video in the playlist on ring theory. In this video what I'm going to do is talk about certain theorems regarding factorization of polynomials over a general field. Okay, so factorization of polynomials that are in a ring of polynomials over a certain field. Okay, so the first thing I'd like to do then is characterize which polynomials of degree 1, 2, and 3 are reducible and which are irreducible in a ring of polynomials over a field. Okay, so uh, just to do the start-up talk then, okay, so we're going to be working with a ring of polynomials where the coefficient ring is a field here, so f adjoin x is what we're going to be working with. Okay, and we want to characterize which polynomials of degrees 1, 2, and 3 are reducible and irreducible in this ring of polynomials over a field. Okay, so, uh, remember this ring of polynomials over a field is a very nice uh, ring. It is a Euclidean domain, uh, which implies that it's a principal ideal domain, which then implies that it's a unique factorization domain. Okay, so it's a very nice ring. Uh, and what we want to consider is which elements are going to be reducible and which are going to be irreducible. Uh, but we're not going to do all of that. We're just going to look at degree 1, 2, and 3 polynomials. Okay, right. So firstly, let me just remind you of what irreducible means uh, in a general ring, and then we'll apply it to the ring of polynomials over the field, capital F. So remember, an irreducible element in a general non-zero commutative ring is a non-zero non-unit element. So the definition of reducible and irreducible, it can't be applied to unit elements, okay? It can't be applied to zero and it can't be applied to units. So elements that are not units can be called either reducible or irreducible. Okay, and if it's irreducible, it means that any product that exists which makes that element. So if you can write your element, let's say R, as a product of two other elements in the non-zero commutative ring, A and B here, then one of these elements has to be a unit, and therefore the other element is just an associate of the element R. Okay, so there's only these trivial products of a unit with an associate of the element R, which make R. There are no real interesting products of two non-unit elements being multiplied together to give this element R. Okay, that is what is meant by an irreducible element uh, in a general non-zero commutative ring. Now, because, of course, uh, the ring of polynomials over the field capital F is a unique factorization domain, we know that the definition of an irreducible element uh, is the same as the definition of a prime element, or rather, although the definitions aren't the same, uh, the definitions converge and all elements that are irreducible are prime and vice versa. Okay, so these elements uh, that are irreducible in the ring of polynomials over uh, the field capital F are going to be primes as well. Okay, so let's now try and work out then which elements are going to be reducible and which are going to be irreducible. And by the way, reducible is then just not irreducible. So if it is the case that there exists a product of two things where both of these things that have been multiplied together are not units that makes your element, then it would be called reducible. Okay, so let's go through the polynomials in the ring of polynomials over the field capital F and think as to whether they're reducible or irreducible. So the first thing to say is that for the zero polynomial and the constant polynomials, uh, you cannot do this okay, uh, because they're all units in the case of the constant polynomials or the zero element in the case of the zero polynomial. Okay, so for degree zero polynomials, it's very simple. Okay, no comment or not applicable is the answer. Okay, because remember in a uh, ring of polynomials over a, a field, capital F, all of the constant polynomials are units. Okay, because uh, after all, that sub-portion of just the constant polynomials is effectively the same as the initial field, capital F. So all of those elements, apart from zero, will have a multiplicative inverse, and therefore they will uh, be units still in the ring of polynomials uh, over the field, capital F. Okay, so degree zero uh, are neither reducible nor irreducible. The definition is just not applicable, so I'll put an NA there for not applicable. Okay, so now let's move on to degree 1 polynomials. Okay, so polynomials where we have a non-zero coefficient in front of uh, the x to the power of 1 term, but that's our highest um, 
power of x that has a non-zero coefficient. Okay, well, I claim that all of these polynomials are irreducible, and let me explain the reasoning. Okay, and in fact, uh, all of my arguments for degree 1, degree 2, and degree 3 are going to totally rely on a certain uh, property that uh, rings of polynomials over integral domains obey. Okay, uh, so whenever you take a ring of polynomials over a coefficient ring which is an integral domain, it turns out that it is true that the degree of the product of two polynomials, a of x times b of x, is actually just equal to the sum of the degrees of the two polynomials, so the degree of the polynomial a of x plus the degree of the polynomial b of x. Okay, so you just ask what was the degree of the polynomial a of x, what was the degree of the polynomial b of x, add those two together and that will be the degree of a of x times b of x. So this is true in a ring of polynomials which is over an integral domain. Now all fields are integral domains, okay, automatically. Uh, so we certainly are going to have it true that this is true. Okay, so the degree of the product of two polynomials in my ring of polynomials over this field is going to be the degree of the two things that you producted together, added together. Okay, right. Uh, so, what does that now mean? Why is that useful? Well, if I'm multiplying two elements together, okay, and getting a degree one polynomial, and I'm interested in multiplying uh, things together to get a degree one polynomial, because I'm interested in asking whether it's reducible or irreducible, okay, um, then I can conclude that one of the things I multiply together uh, to get it must have had degree 1 and the other must have had degree 0. That's the only option, okay? That's the only way that you can add two uh, non-negative integers together and get 1, okay? So if we know the answer here is uh, 1, uh, then the only options are that one of the polynomials I multiplied together had degree 1 and the other had degree 0. And if I can just back uh, back step for a moment, okay? I think my first argument probably should have been why it's even relevant to actually give a comment as to whether degree 1 polynomials are reducible or irreducible. Degree 1 polynomials are not going to be units in the ring of polynomials over the field, okay? Uh, because, again, whenever you uh, take a ring of polynomials over an integral domain, because of this formula, you can conclude that all non-constant polynomials are not units, okay? So in the ring of polynomials over a field, the constant polynomials are units, and the non-constant polynomials are not going to be units, okay? And the reason non-constant polynomials cannot be units is exactly because of this formula. Okay, uh, whenever you multiply two polynomials together, the degree always goes up unless one of the polynomials is the zero polynomial, uh, in which case uh, the degree of the zero polynomial isn't even defined, so we won't consider that. That's a special silly case. But when you're not multiplying, to, when you're multiplying together two non-zero elements, uh, the degree of the product is always greater than or equal to the degree of each of the two initial polynomials. So it's greater than or equal to the degree of a of x, and it's greater than or equal to the degree of b of x. Okay, uh, so that means that if you have a degree 1 polynomial or some other non-constant polynomial, what other polynomial could you possibly multiply it by to get the degree of the polynomial to go back to zero, which is the degree of the uh, multiplicative identity polynomial, which is 1, okay? Uh, so, of course, there's nothing. There's nothing that you can do that for. If you use the 0 polynomial, you go to the 0 polynomial, not to 1, okay? So there is literally nothing that you can multiply your polynomial with that could get you back to 1, basically, because your degree always goes up or stays the same at the very least. Okay, so that's why I can conclude that it's relevant to talk about reducibility uh, for polynomials of degree 1, and indeed for all non-constant polynomials, because they're not going to be units. Okay, now, uh, back to what I was saying, uh, I know that a degree 1 polynomial, if it's splitting into um, a product of two elements, one of those must have been a degree 1 polynomial, and the other must have been a degree 0 polynomial. Just by this uh, equation, what else can it possibly have been? Okay, if this was 0 and this was 0, you'd end up with a degree 0 polynomial as the product. If both of them were degree 1, you'd end up with a degree 2 polynomial as your uh, product, okay? The only way to end up with a degree 1 polynomial back again is to multiply a degree 1 polynomial with a degree 0 polynomial. But of course, all degree 0 polynomials are units, okay? Uh, so uh, that 
shows us that they are all irreducible because all products are going to involve a unit in this uh, ring of polynomials over the uh, field. Okay, so all degree one polynomials then, uh, we can conclude that they are irreducible. Okay, now it gets more interesting when we go up to degree two and degree three polynomials. Okay, some degree two polynomials and some degree three polynomials are going to be reducible and some are going to be irreducible. Okay, they're not all going to be categorically one or the other. Okay, and there's a very nice way to tell whether a uh, polynomial, a certain polynomial, is reducible or irreducible. Okay, so we're going to consider them together. So degree two and degree three. Okay, so before we actually look at uh, this theorem that allows us to tell whether they are reducible or irreducible, let's again think about this equation here and what it tells us. Okay, so if we've got a degree 2 polynomial and we've got a product of two things that are multiplying together to make the degree 2 polynomial, what are the possibilities for the degrees of these two things that are multiplying together to get the degree 2 polynomial? So we're now saying a of x times b of x is going to be a degree 2 polynomial. Okay, what are the possibilities here? Well, of course, one of them could be degree 2 and then the other degree 0, but then that would mean that the degree 0 one was a unit, in which case you wouldn't have found a product that would show that this polynomial was reducible. The other possibility is that both of them could be degree 1. Okay, and then, of course, those polynomials will not be units, and if you could write it, therefore, as a product of two degree 1 polynomials, you'd be in business. You'd have shown that it's reducible. Okay, so... What can I conclude then about uh, reducible degree 2 polynomials? Reducible degree 2 polynomials are going to be those polynomials which you can write as the product of a degree 1 polynomial with a degree 1 polynomial. Those products, sorry, those polynomials that cannot be written as the product of a degree 1 polynomial with a degree 1 polynomial will not be reducible. Okay, they will be irreducible. So those that cannot uh, be written as the product of two degree one polynomials, they're instantly irreducible, okay, because the only other products they can be written as are degree two with degree zero by this brilliant formula here. Now let's do the same thing for degree three polynomials here. So now we're asking about a product that gives us a degree three polynomial. What are the options here? Well, of course, you could have one of them as a degree three and the other as a degree zero, but of course, that wouldn't be showing that the polynomial is reducible because the degree zero would once again be a unit, okay? Uh, therefore, let's consider something else. You could have one being degree two and the other being degree one. And in fact, that's the only other option because then if you uh, go further, you'd make this one degree one and this one degree two, and then you go back up to degree zero and degree three. So that is actually the final option, the only other option. One is a degree two polynomial and the other is a degree one polynomial. Okay, so again, reducible polynomials that are of degree 3 must be writable as a degree 2 polynomial multiplied with a degree 1 polynomial, i.e. polynomials of degree 2 and 3 are reducible only if, if and only if, they have as one of their divisors, they have as a divisor a degree 1 polynomial, if and only if they are a multiple of a degree 1 polynomial. Okay, so... What we're going to do then in the next video is come up with a theorem that will allow us to assess whether a polynomial is a multiple of a degree one polynomial. Okay, and that will apply for an arbitrary polynomial, but then of course we can use it uh, here to understand when degree two polynomials and degree three polynomials are going to excuse me, are going to be reducible because they're only reducible if they are multiples of a certain degree one polynomial. Okay, as we've just argued here. So see you in the next video.